Ladies, you just finished your introduction. Yes. How does it feel, Chelsea? It feels really nice. Um, I wasn't nervous at all, so that's really great. Okay. And what about you, Stella? Yeah, it's really nice. Mark, the cameraman, is also really fun to be with, so uh, we made it fun with each other. That's very important, making fun all together. What about you, Shimei? How did it go? Well, for me, it was such a special, uh, special happening. It's not something I used to do a lot. Uh, I really love this experience as a whole. Okay, thank you so much. And, of course, we want to get to know you a little bit better. And we wonder what fun fact people should know about you. Stella? Well, I'm addicted to olives. To olives? Black olives. So Black I eat olives. them with every dish, not only Italian, but also Asian food and everything. <laughs> so every night I eat uh, Black olives, and if my boyfriend goes grocery shopping and he forgets them, then I send him back. You send him back? <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. He should know after eight years. <laughs> oh, eight years of relationship. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> so, and how does he feel you are in the competition of Miss World Netherlands? Then? He's really proud of me, and he yeah loves to follow me and everything I do, and he even helped me with my makeup this morning. <laughs> So, yeah, I think that's so really important. Yeah. <laughs> good one to keep, right? <laughs> First one, You did a good job. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Shane? What do people know I about you? I love reading books. I'm always reading books every day. I try to learn from it. Uh, it's, it's like the self growth book. I'm, I'm in love with them. Okay, and any other specialties we have to know about you? Um, well, when I was four, I started to play the violin. I was this like little violin and I tried to play. Of course, I couldn't play immediately, but um, yeah. And like, since then, I was like playing it all the time. Okay, so I that's your talent for this year, also. Maybe I'm thinking like I'm still doubting between singing and playing violin because I love them both. Um, Violin is close to my heart. It's something that I always uh, not share as much because it's something that was more me. Uh, singing I do more often in public, uh, with friends, uh, and sometimes with colleagues. So I'm still doubting what I'm going to do. <laughs> Maybe you could uh, make a combination of the two. That would be actually really nice. <laughs> yeah, think about it. Chelsea, what about you? Yes, well, almost everybody already knows, but I saw my own clothes. I sew um, dresses, tops, I'm working on a bucket hat right now out of my wow. dad's old jeans. I'm almost done, it's like 50% done. And I make bags and all. And where can we find those beautiful and gorgeous clothing <laughs> and hats and everything you're making? Well, I actually have something um, planned, but I cannot reveal anything too much, so you guys will see. Soon. Okay, yes. and where can we follow that something soon? Um, on my Instagram and Chelsea underscore Tiffany. I think I will be announcing it there. Okay, yes. so keep on. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, everybody, keep an eye on her. Yes. And you too, or do you already know? No, we no, already no. follow her, but yes. we keep her. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe. Uh, a little bit and yes. find out where she's up to. Keep an eye on her. Keep an eye on her, indeed. So ladies, also, you talked a little bit about your beautiful purpose. And we wonder which SDG, because you are ambassadors of the United Nations, you linked up with your beautiful purpose. Chelsea, tell us something about your beautiful purpose. Yes. yes, I chose SDG 3, good health and well-being, and also SDG 8 which is fair work and uh, uh, economic growth. I chose this because I'm uh, more invested in garment workers and what they really go through. They get less than $3 per day. They work so much hours. They have no money to care for their children, so they have to give them away. And they also don't have enough food, so they have nutrition problems. And there's also exploitation, sexual assault, violence, 
you tell us? For me it's also the SDG about um, good health and well-being and especially loneliness uh, in the elderly. I just graduated as a medical doctor and at my work I often see elderly people who are really lonely, don't have any family, live really isolated by themselves, sometimes even not able to take care of themselves in houses, not able to keep them clean and that really yeah, goes at my heart uh, and I really want to help those people and create more awareness and especially during the COVID-19 year they got even more isolated and I think we need to get them out of the isolation, get more people to know their neighbours, um, to come by and ask how they're doing. And you see a lot of people just being lonely in your current position. Yeah, really, so much people and well, me as a normal person in my normal daily life, I don't see them at all. So it's really an eye-opener that if I go to my work, I see multiple people at one day who are really lonely, don't have any, anybody. So that's yeah, says something about how this problem is so hidden in society that yeah. you don't really encounter it if you don't know that it's all behind closed doors. And how do you want to do that to bring that awareness? Yeah, I was thinking maybe opening a social media account and interviewing um, elderly people who are lonely and first go into the neighborhood route and go to uh, yeah, community uh, uh, associations and then interview them and maybe give them a voice and a platform to uh, yeah, tell their story. Wow, looking forward to yeah. that. Shiren, tell us a little bit more about your Peace with Purpose. My Peace with Purpose is focused on green and beach pollution. Um, Two years ago, I started to use Havenia, and it was I, it had so much positive sides. You know, you the beach, you can have so much fun. But you can also see the downsides, and downsides is the nights at summer. There's a lot of drunk people there, and they throw their bottles everywhere. And people with children, they just leave, and paper bags are everywhere, clothes are everywhere, and also really close to the sea itself. And the sea takes that with it, and just you know, it will go along into the ocean. Um, and when I started this journey in this world, it was the first thing that I thought about, this must be my beauty and purpose. And that's coupled together with SEG 14 and 15, um, because I want to focus on land, but also on the marine life as well, because it actually goes together. Because the atmosphere here, where we just breathe uh, the oxygen and breathe out has effect on the ocean itself and we don't notice this but there is so much going together and we don't at least most of the time see the ocean separate from the land but actually it goes together it's one whole thing and that's why I actually chose for both of them the marine and the beach pollution and do you feel that um, we do not take care enough of this problem in the Netherlands because if you look worldwide you yes. see devastating movies and short videos about pollution? Well, a lot is already known about plastic pollution. We focus a lot on that nowadays. Uh, we can see with the bins on the beaches, they do a lot about it. But it's not only the bins, it's also how we treat our air, for example. There's more carbon dioxide, uh, and because of that, it also has effects on the sea. And also, for example, um, there's also the oil leaks. Because of oil leaks, there's not a lot of sun going to the world. And because of that, the plants in the sea can't actually get oxygen. And because of that, they can't actually grow. They can't actually provide what the fish need into the sea. And this is a really big problem. And it's not only, it's not only people, it's also companies, it's a whole thing. I think it's not one one group that we need to target with this. I think we need to see it as a whole and see what we can do as a whole instead of targeting people here. And how do you want to do that? Um, first of all, I think we should bring more awareness within the children. So start at an early age, organize fun events, for example, to go to the beach and to the beaches uh, in the afternoons around three or five as an whole event for for the preschools and then that they can clean and afterwards go to trampolines or anything, you know, have a fun day. And then within high schools actually teach children what kind of effect we have. 
And also, I want to see how companies are treating the sea and treating this environment at the moment. Because we have rules, but not all rules are bendable. And like, to what extent are they doing that at the moment? Um, a lot is not known yet. And I think it's with the Maze World platform, we can actually bring awareness to all ages, to all kind of people. And that's really important for me. Okay, and you already started. So now it's up to you, ladies and gentlemen. Follow their examples, follow them on social media, and get to know them, first of all, better. And second of all, get them to action, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're going to take a break. Part two is coming up. Thank you. Welcome back, ladies. We just had a short break, and we are up to the subject of violence and security, safety in the Netherlands. Lately, there's a lot to do in the news past months, and I noticed there's more violence coming up in the streets, and it doesn't matter if this, this is a big city or a small village. How do you experience that, Chelsea? Yes, you see a lot of in the news that, that there's a lot of violence amongst teenage kids. We've seen that teenage kids stab each other or sometimes even murder other peers because of fights on, on school also. And that's very dangerous. I think there should be taught lessons on schools, especially high schools, about how to deal with conflict, with respect, and without the use of violence. Because your teenage years are really your years that shape you. So if you make those choices now that you use violence, those will become adult choices and that will get us even more in an increase of violence later on. So I think it's very important to let kids uh, get uh, lessons about how to uh, deal with conflicts respectfully. And you live in the big city of Amsterdam, right? Yes. Do you feel safe? I do feel safe. Yeah, I do feel half safe, but I think it's also, uh, it depends on where you live, and I live in the west side, <laughs> so, but yeah, if you grow up there, you're, you're kind of used to it, but that shouldn't be normal, actually. Okay, yeah. so you experience, yes, also in school, or teachers are getting harassed with knives, and it's, yeah, it's not really, yes, wow. Okay, that's yeah. it. <laughs> to live in Harlem. I think that's one of my priorities if I want to live somewhere. I first want to feel, walk down the streets, do I feel safe here? And if I don't feel safe somewhere, then I can't live there because you also come late. Yeah, you come home late, and you're walking in the dark, sometimes all by yourself. And, uh, well, for example, my boyfriend lived in Amsterdam, uh, southeast before, and there I did not always feel safe, especially at night, alone, people, yeah, following you or shouting really? at you. Yeah, it was really, yeah. I didn't like it as much. So I think it's a problem in some areas, but not everywhere. But it's think, I think it's yeah, it's a growing problem. Yeah. Especially in the cities. Yeah, but also in the villages. If you yeah. put on the news and mm -hmm. if you listen a little bit to the regional radio stations, you hear it everywhere. Yes. Is that also your experience, Shin? Um, in Spain, it's really different per time. Uh, in the summer, especially during the night, everyone is drunk, uh, guys are screaming things and not really violent, they just scream. Uh, so it's, it's fine if it stays still there, you know, it's like, it's still not fine, but you don't feel as threatened if they actually walk up to you. Um, in the winter, actually, I feel more safe because there are not as much people um, and people don't tend to come in the winter because it's really, it's really cold. Um, but during the summer when it's just during daytime, there's more families now. There was a time two years ago that was really dangerous. Um, actually, there was uh, there were on the pier people stabbed each other. Uh, it was not really safe. Uh, but they actually worked on it in the state. So I'm really happy about that. Yeah. And do you notice that there are taking they are taking actions against violence and police? 
for safety in, in villages and, and cities? Yeah. What is your experience with that, Stella? Well, uh, for example, I lived in Uitboorn before and I had like a bad accident or somebody like stalking me um, all the way to my flat and the next day I um, went to the police station to uh, do uh, press, charges. press charges and there were no cameras outside. So after that, my flat um, committee wanted to put cameras outside just so they could yeah, see who's there. So that's one of the examples on my behalf. That action has been taken yeah. yeah. because of my incident. Okay, that's really good to know. Yeah. And to hear, of course. Yeah, I'm really happy that there are now cameras everywhere. So <laughs> I'm not living there anymore, but it's still way safe now. So. Okay, what about you, Chelsea? Well, I haven't seen a lot of improvement in Amsterdam, but there are She also made photographs of 
is that before that she actually could take this Poseidon position and that she would fight for actually what she believed in and that she did not stop. What about you, Stella? I think it's really cool that she broke the barriers for women because women were not really allowed to join the armed missions and she was like, well, I'm going to do that. And people were like, oh, it's not safe for you and you could die or it's a, a real fight and you should uh, photograph children. <laughs> to do that, I think that's really cool that she just was no How she, she did some world photography things, right? Mm -hmm. What was the most impressive thing for you she, she's done? I think, uh, yes, I think she, um, I think that taking a photograph of Mr. Gandhi was very impressive because she got him just in time before he got to CC. And I think that is such a once in a life in Germany just at the end of the war, so she was one, she was one of the first people to see the like yeah yeah the concentration camps um, revelations say it and it's yeah the picture the living death of Buchenwald is I think one of her most famous pictures and there you see all the people who just got released out of the concentration camps and how they were barely alive. I think yeah. that's one of the most impressive pictures she ever took because it also yeah showed the role of what the concentration camps were like because nobody had ever seen those people before and she was the first to bring that picture out to the open and to the world. And what what did you personally learn from her? Even though you never met her but her story and everything she meant? Well that can be hard and for her it was definitely really hard. She was in a century that nothing was given and even then she wished to what she actually wanted to show the world and what she actually could offer it. And that gives me inspiration to whatever I'm doing and whatever is going on and whatever obstacle is there that I should go on and that I should try. Yes, you should. As well, if I want something, I think the sky is the limit, and what she thought as well. And she made everything she wanted to do, and she was the first of a lot of things. And I think that's able for everyone if you want to, even if you're a woman or you're, yeah, there, there's also a reason, always a reason to go for your goals. Yeah. And you, Chelsea, you say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that. Chelsea, you want to add something to that? Yeah. 
to educate yes. was more than just beauty. Yes, definitely. And that said, ladies and gentlemen, we are finished with this amazing group. But stay tuned, go on YouTube, follow them on social media, and it's only the start.